What's that? It's very upbeat. -y. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Another lore reading for you guys. So this is technically a, a continuation from the Heavenly Light, but it's through the Nickelodeon, which I think is kind of cool. So there's a little bit of an off BD version. But anyway, so this is the next one. This is Courage and Honor. I'll leave a link for you guys so you guys can check out the other uh, the other four for the Heavenly Light event. So, but in the meantime, let's get this one started. So this is Courage and Honor. I am Ula, and the bear is mine. Ula pointed one of his axes at Lancelot. Now stand aside, mortal, or become my prey as well. Lancelot considered this. His first impulse was to draw his sword and make a threat of his own. But instead, he simply leaned his lance against his shoulders and said, Welcome to Camelot, Ula. I am Lancelot Duloc, and I, you are far from your lance. He spoke. He racked his brain, trying to recall what he knew of the gods of the north. Uller was one of them, but, but which one? What was he the god of? I go where the hunt takes me, Ula said. He looked, took a step towards the bear. Move aside, I said. I have hunted this creature for many days, and I would claim my due. <laughs> These lands are not yours, Lancelot said, putting himself between the injured animal and the god. They belong to King Arthur. Uller paused. And what is a king to me? He asked. You are trespassing. It would be construed as an act of war. Uller snorted. I am a hunter, Lord. That is my quarry. Nothing else of any importance. Now, for the last time, I demand that you step aside. He clashed his axes together, and Lancelot felt a moment of indecision. But, well... What's this what Marilyn had seen in his vision? If so, what was he supposed to do? Fight a god? His hand tightened around the haft of his lance. He had to admit, the idea intrigued him, if nothing else. It would be a true test of his skill as, as a knight. It was that which decided it. It was obvious to him now that Merlin had sent him to confront Uller. He leveled the lance like a spear. He was tempted to draw his blade, but he thought keeping Uller at a distance would be a wiser course. No. These are not your lands, mighty Uller. These lands belong to Camelot, and you are trespassing. He hoped it sounded more authoritative than he felt. Uller studied him. You think to match deal with me, mortal? My king sent my, one of you last guardians fleeing not long ago, Lancelot said. Tear, I think he was called. You do not look half as f so fearsome. Uller scowled. Are you mad? You must be to taunt a god. He inhaled and nodded. Fine. I gave you a chance, but I will not be deterred by my hunt. With that, he charged. He plied his axes so swiftly that Lancelot was hard-pressed to counter the blows the god sent his way. But counter them, he did. Even so, Uller's assault drove him backwards towards the bear. He had hoped the animal wouldn't take offense, given that he was trying to protect it. But as he retreated, he heard a strange sound, as if some unseen prison had inhaled suddenly and loudly. He risked a glance toward the wounded animal and saw that it was riding ponderously to its feet, eyes blazing with an er unearthly fire. The bear roared, and Uller stopped in his tracks, a perplexed look on his face. What trickery is this? He growled. His gaze flicked to Lancelot. Explain yourself. What have you done? This is no doing of mine, Lancelot said, staring at the bear. He, the, its form shimmered strangely, and for half a moment he wondered if it was some kind of trick of Morgan Le Fay's. But the moment passed in an instant. The bear shrugged his shoulders and cast its arrow, cast off its arrow-pierced hide, revealing a form of a tall, crimson-haired woman, a clad and Celtic raiment. You! She snarled, glaring at Uller. With a roar like in her previous form, she sprang for the god. As she did so, her curved staff coalesced her hands. Uller blocked the bow from the staff and retreated. His expression turned from puzzlement to anger. Trickery, he said. Stepping back, 
He looked back. He looked from her to Lancelot. Is this a trap then? If so, you will regret it. The Aesir will not stand for it. I apologize for the dogs. Lancelot ignored him and looked to the woman. Who are you? How did you come to be a, in the form of a bear? And it was with Uller. He could feel her power. She was as divine as Uller, but he did not recognize her. The woman peered at him as if noticing him for the first time. I am Ardio, guardian of the cycle. The bear is me, and I am the bear. She drew herself up. You have aided me, mortal. For that, I will offer you a boon and a warning. Do not interfere. She looked to Uller. I will have my vengeance on the one who hurt me before I leave this place. Uller tensed. I was hunting a bear, not some wild goddess of the Celts. I meant no offense, Lady Ario. <laughs> that may as be. But offense be t was taken, ne nevertheless. Ardio said. With that, she slammed her ferrule of her staff against the ground. A moment later, the snow-covered earth erupted in strands of thorny greenery. Vine shot upwards towards Uller and sought to ensnare him. Lancelot stepped back, and the two gods ignored him, focusing on one another. Roaring, Uller leapt aside and chopped through the vines with his axes. Ardio swung her staff, and the vines pursued her opponent as he retreated through the trees trying to put some distance between himself and the bear goddess. Ardeo followed. Enveloped in the shimmering outline of the great she-bear, the trees swayed aside of, at her gesture. Uller turned. He sheathed his axes from his belt and readied his bow. As Lancelot watched, he loosed a volley of shimmering arrows more swiftly than any human archer. Ardeo spun her staff, deflecting the volley. Lancelot was forced to duck as one whizzed past. The battle soon carried the two gods deeper into the forest. They were moving more swiftly than a human could follow. Lancelot ran to his horse, standing nervously nearby. Fine fellow, he murmured encouragingly, as he climbed on to, into the saddle. He hauled on the reins, turning the animal in the direction of the battle had gone, and thumped its flanks with his heel, even as he hefted his lance. The horse leapt forward with, great, with a great whinny, and soon they were galloping through the forest on the trail of the battling gods. It was easy enough for him to track them. They left a trail of destruction behind them that a, that a blind man could even follow. Excuse me. Everywhere around him were broken trees and torn ground. The forest wouldn't survive if their skirmish went on much longer. He hated to imagine what would happen if the battle had spread to a village or even the Camelot itself. And it would spread. Things were too volatile in these lands for it would not to do so. Arthur had told him more than once that peace was balanced on a, on a knife's edge. The Celts against the Northmen, the Northmen against Cancel Camelot. Round and round they went, and so too did their gods. Where mortals went, gods followed and vice versa. Merlin had explained some of it to him, though he did not pretend to understand all of it. But he knew enough not to know that this was not merely a skirmish. Whatever Uller's intentions, his actions m might well spark a war between the pantheons. The Celtic pantheon would see it as an attack on their sovereignty and react in kind. Lancelot knew that he had to stop them before things went too far. But how? He was still looking for an answer when he caught up with them for in another clearing. A newly made one. Given the uprooted trees and ravaged the ground, the two deities had come together with a crash, axe against staff. He was nearly knocked off from his feet by the force of the impact. They broke apart, Ardeo slicing at Uller with shimmering claws. Uller was sent sprawling. He hurled his axe, forcing her to dodge aside. I will punish you for the indignity you inflicted on pardon upon me, Ardeo cried. She drove her fist into the ground and it ruptured. Tendrils of green lashed at Uller as he scrambled to his feet. Lancelot slid from his saddle and reached for his sword, but hesitated. Another weapon here would make no difference. To strike at one would decide with the other. There had to be another way. Nonetheless, he kept his lance to his hand. He swatted his horse on the flank. 
go get some distance, he said, starting towards the battle. He had beginnings of an idea. Not a good one, perhaps, but it was the only one that he had. Uller moved, losing another, losing another arrow. It tore through the weaving vines that Ardio summoned to intercept it, and would have st struck her had Lancelot not interposed his lance at the last moment. Ardio glanced at him, wide-eyed. Uller, too, stopped. A look of concern consternation on his face. I thought I told you not to interfere. Ardio said after a moment of silence. <laughs> You're welcome, Lancelot said. This must end, he turned to Ardio. Lady Ardio, earlier you said you owed me a boon. I wish to claim it now. Now? She asked, incredulous. You cannot wait for a more convenient time? <laughs> I cannot. Ardio frowned, but glanced at Uller. He nodded tersely. It is his right, annoyed though, annoying though it might be, he said. Claim your boon, mortal. I will not interfere. Ardio took a deep breath. Fine. What do you wish of me? Lancelot hesitated, hoping his idea would work. If it didn't, he was going to have to think very quickly indeed. I ask that you stay your hand and return to your own lands. Ardio glared at him. She was silent for a moment and then growled. You side with him then, man of Camelot? My life is not yours to bargain for, mortal. Ula said in harsh tones, reaching for his axes again. Lancelot frowned and shook his head. Were all gods so stubborn? A part of him wanted nothing more than to challenge them both, but he forced them to part down. I meant no offense to either of you, but I have made my request. By your own word, you are bound to fulfill it. The two gods looked at him and wondered if he had overstepped. He hesitated and then added, This was a mistake, and nothing more. It does not have to become something greater. <laughs> He insulted my person, Ardio said. He harried me like a beast. Well, you did look like a bear, Elangela interjected. She glared at him. He raised his hand in a placatory, a placatory measure, even as if he tried to think of how Arthur might handle the situation. He cleared his throat. Even so, you are right. He looked at Uller. I have always been told that the gods can sense one another. Did you not recognize her? Uller's eyes narrowed and he stroked his beard, considering the point. No, I did not. Her animal shape must have cloaked her divinity from my perceptions. <laughs> he is lying, Ariel growled, but she sounded uncertain. With the heat of the battle fading, Lancelot could tell they were beginning to think, and perhaps to see the foolishness of their actions. Why didn't you change back when you first attacked? He asked her. She hesitated. I... I could not. Not until you pulled the arrow from me. She rubbed her shoulder as if to soothe an ache. It was as if I could not remember how. Perhaps my wits were addled by my treacherous by his treacherous attack. Treacherous Uller began, incensed. Or perhaps you were ensorcelled, Lancelot said quickly. There was more there was no more than a shadow of a theory, but it was an answer that would not allow them both to be safe, to save face. Perhaps someone worked mischief upon you both. Perhaps neither of, it, of you was at fault. Ardio hesitated again, and then nodded reluctantly. Yes, it is possible. A trick, Uller said, looking at Lancelot. But why would someone do such a thing? Lancelot shook his head. That I cannot say. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe there was no trick. No ensorcelment. Maybe it was just simply bad luck. Getting an arrow stuck in you was enough to distract anyone. But either way, it was a mistake. Nothing more. He turned to Ardia. You have sufficiently vented your wrath. Lady Ardia. I am sure Lord Uller regrets the harm that he did. He glanced at Uller, who sighed. <sighs> I do. Had I known who you were, what you were, I would not lose my arrow. He gave a wry smile. I certainly would not have pursued you all this way. Ardio snorted. I should hope not. She looked to Lan Lancelot. I will give you your boon, Lancelot of Camelot, and my thanks. Besides, she looked up at Uller. To you, I give a warning. 
Do not let me catch you in my lands again, Hunter. I will not be so merciful next time. And with those words, her form shimmered and vanished. From somewhere far above came the cry of a hawk, as if it wheeled towards the land of the Celts. Uller grunted. Ugh, I preferred her as a bear, I think. He peered at Lancelot. Until next time, Lancelot to luck. I look forward to seeing whether it is as friends or as enemies. He turned and with a single step vanished into the surrounding trees. Lancelot sighed and tapped in the pummels of his sword. He thought back of Morgan Fay's unannounced visit and how she sent his steed running right for the spot where he needed to be in order to avert the possible tragedy. Had that been her intention all along? Or was it just luck? Well, for that matter, had Merlin had known that Morgan would be here, he ran his hand through his hair and sighed again. Oh, There's too many questions, he murmured. Give me a straight up fight any day. He then he turned and he went to his horse. Arlen and Merlin were no doubt anxiously waiting his return. He climbed weirdly into the saddle. On his horse wickered and he patted, patted the animal's necks. Let's go home, he said, and nudged his steed towards the direction of Camelot. That one was interesting. That's a very, very intense. What do you guys think? You guys are going to have to let me know what you guys think. But this has been your lore reading. This has been Courage and Honor. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy, everyone.